my name is Rahali Gasamania. I'm an occupational therapist and a public health doctoral student. I'm presenting today on the application of critical sexuality studies to the spinal cord injury rehabilitation setting. In this presentation, I will refer to critical sexuality studies as CSS and to spinal cord injury as SCI. Women account for 20% of all individuals entered into the National Spinal Cord Injury Model System database. The prevalence of women with SCI in the United States continues to increase. When the spinal cord is injured, every bodily function is affected, and as a result, this population experiences an avalanche of psychological and physiological changes that threaten a variety of health outcomes, including their sexual health. Disparities in sexual health care and outcomes are amplified for women with disabilities. The health and quality of life for women with SCI are heavily dependent upon the interventions received acutely post-injury and throughout the course of long-term spinal cord rehabilitation. However, health outcomes associated with sexuality and sexual health are not highly prioritized. When queried about their experiences of sexual health education, women who received rehabilitation in these settings shared that they lack opportunity to explore how their injuries impact their sexuality. The silence around sexual health education influences how this population interprets what it means to be a female sexual being living with a physical disability. The sexual health outcomes for this population are currently understood through a biomedical framework and are based on heteronormative, cisgendered, male-centric, and able-bodied assumptions. Studies on healthcare after SCI unveil implicit biases in providers. However, there is a gap in investigating gendered biases in the institutional and organizational policies guiding sexual health outcomes for women with spinal injury. The preliminary conceptual framework presented today is based on the CSS developed by Sarah McClelland, a psychologist and sexuality researcher. This critical theory framework has feminist and social constructivist foundations and scrutinizes gendered and heterosexual norms in sexuality research and practice at the structural level. In figure one, you can see how we have applied this framework to the rehabilitation setting and to women with SCI. For this population, sexual outcomes are tied directly to a particular point in time of service after their injury and to a specific healthcare setting. By overlaying the characteristics of CSS, we can first examine how sexual health is conceptualized after injury, then attend to the able-bodied norms influencing sexual discourse, and critically analyze how gendered and heterosexual norms pervade assumptions underlying sexual health goals for women with SCI and the education they receive in rehabilitation settings. We can also examine the implicit messages communicated about what this population can expect and even deserves relative to their sexual satisfaction after injury. Examples of these implicit messages and structural sexism in rehabilitation settings are pervasive in SCI sexual health educational materials. For example, educational handouts limit illustrations of sexual positions to penile vaginal intercourse and other representations of heterosexual intimacy. In these materials, men are portrayed in provocative contexts, while women are portrayed as recipients of caregiving by men. Examples of gender disparity are also apparent in the education provided by SCI practitioners. These providers are trained to educate men about penile vibrators that aid in achieving erection, while for women, the educational topics revolve around reproduction and mothering roles. Implications for application of this critical theory to SCI sexuality research are far-reaching. Current studies are concerned with the experiences of women living with SCI and with practitioner experiences of providing sexual health education. However, to this point, the study designs have been largely atheoretical, designed to examine the influence of individual providers on sexual health outcomes, and leave sexuality research prone to bias by assumptions made about gender, sexual health, and disability. Critical sexuality studies provides a lens to examine the healthcare training curricula, the development of sexuality education materials, and the rhetoric of sexual health outcomes as a priority for rehabilitation settings. Applying this critical theory to SCI practice provides a scaffold to deconstruct the institutional policies and procedures that perpetuate gender disparity in rehabilitation settings. Thank you.